In this video, I'm going to show you how I go about choosing the right strikes for my poor man's covered call trade. Uh, selecting the right strikes is very important with these kind of trades because you always want to make sure you're in, a, you're in a position to be profitable. You always need to know your break even levels, and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So by the end, you should feel confident in choosing your poor man covered call strikes. All right, let's get into it. So one of the most important values you need to know when trading poor man's covered calls is the break even value of your long call. To figure out the break even value, all you need to do is look at the strike price of your long call plus the price you paid for it. That's your break even value. So the strike price plus the price you paid for the option. That's your break even value. And that's a good value to know because at expiration, anything at that price or above will be profitable for your long call option. When I first opened my poor man's covered call trades, I usually like to uh, choose the strike at the 30 delta for my short call. I find that's a, you know, a good value. You give yourself room for some uh, stock price appreciation plus you collect decent amount of premium from there. So a good rule of thumb for me is when I'm opening a poor man's covered call trade, I like to use the 30 delta for my short strikes. For my long strike, I usually like to go, you know, about, about a year out, 365 days out, and I usually like to choose the 75 delta. Anything around there is pretty good. So it's all well and good when you open the trade, you, the long call is about a 75 delta and the short call is about a 30 delta. But uh, which strikes do you choose after the you know, been, trade's been going on for a while and it starts going against you? The next time you sell a call, which strikes do you choose? You want to make sure you're always in a position to be profitable. And uh, to show you what to do, I'm going to head over to Thinkorswim. So in Thinkorswim, I'm, I'm going to show you an example of a, a poor man's covered call that I actually have on right now. It's on AMD and the position is actually down. So this is a good example because it'll show you, you know, where I could choose for the, the, the strike selection that will hopefully uh, still make me money. So if you come down here, you'll see that for my long call, I paid 3046 and the strike is the 65. So if you add these two values together, it's like uh, what 9546. So that should, you know, technically be your break even. And if you go into the risk profile, you can kind of see that I'm just going to get rid of the short call for now. So this is the long call. It expires January 19th, 2024. So there's a lot of time left on this, about a year. So the at expiration is the green line right here. If you go all the way out, you see that where this red line is, that's the break even. So it's pretty much there like 95, 46 or whatever. So that's, that's what we just calculated. So that's the break even for this long call at that time at expiration. So at expiration, anything above this value, wherever it lands, that's just pure profit on the long call. But since we're doing a poor man's covered call, and we're only concerned about the expiration date of the short call we'll be selling. So let me show you what I mean. So I actually sold one today. It expires March 17th. So that's that's the expiration date I'm going to I'm going to choose. What I want to show you is if I go in here and I change the date to March 17th. Okay. Now look at this. The, this in this uh, purple line right here. This is the long call at the March 17th expiration date. And if you look at this where this red line crosses it's a 88.45. This is the break even level of the long call at the March 17th expiration date. If you are gonna be selling calls and still looking to be profitable by March 17th, you don't have to do them all the way past the, uh, the break even of the long call at expiration. You can sell them anywhere past the break even level of the long call at the expiration of the short strike, if that makes sense. It's a little confusing, but if you go to the just, Enter here the date of the, the expiration of the short strike. So that's March 17th. And then right here, you look at the break even of the long call at March 17th. If you see the purple right here, it shows you March 17th. That's the, that break even value is very important. So whenever I'm going to sell short calls for my poor man's covered calls, I always make sure to look at the expiration date of the option I'm going to be selling, not, not the expiration date of the long call because that's usually too far away. I like to just make sure I'm always selling calls past this. So anything past 88 would be fine with me. If you see uh, down here, I actually sold one today at 90. So I actually sold it like right here. So if it expires anything above 90, it'll still be profitable. My, my long call, even though the break even is all the way up here, it will still be profitable because time decay hasn't happened yet. This option, you know, has so long until expiration that time decay hasn't had a chance to do its thing yet on it. So the break evens are now down here for March 17th. That's why it's very important to understand break evens, how they work and really how to use a, the risk profile is very important. So even if you don't use Thinkorswim, just make sure you use a platform that has some sort of similar like risk profile feature. 
If you're trading these kind of trades, you really should be using something with a risk profile graph like this because it's really hard to visualize what's going on without something like this. So I want to take a quick look at what the overall profit and loss of the trade would be if uh, the stock expired at the, the $90 strike price or above. And so in order to do that, I'm going to unhide this one. I will set the price slice here to 90 bucks. So you see this right here. If it expired on March 17th at $90, which is the strike we chose based on the break evens that we calculated, it, we, the position would be up 585. That That's totally acceptable for this position because if you see right now, so let me reset these slices. If you see right now, let me go to today's date. The position overall is down 3,700 bucks. You know, it would require a pretty decent move to get up to the, uh, to get up to there, but it's okay if it doesn't. Even if it gets like halfway, then I will roll the short call out, you know, to the next month, and I will use the same break-even technique to figure out what strike to do there. But also, I didn't even show you this yet, but I've actually collected a lot of option premium on this trade already. Let me go into uh, my site so I can show you. So over here on uh, yieldcollector.com, this is my. Uh, Wheel Strategy and Poor Man's Covered Call uh, Tracker. It's free. I'll put a link for it in the description if you want to try it. Uh, go to AMD, and here's the long call I bought. Here's all the, the calls uh, I've sold so far. Well, I've, I've collected a decent amount of premium on this trade. So this actually lowers the break-evens even more, but I didn't even I didn't even calculate that into it. I just want to make sure to always use that other break-even as like a, you know, a line in the sand. I don't ever want to go below that. But I've actually collected about you know 1,500 in premium so far. And if you can see, you know, the long call originally cost me 15,230, but now the net premium is only uh, 13,785. So, you know, I'm just gonna keep selling calls, hopefully, and eventually this will dwindle down to, to zero and maybe get above zero. As long as I can sell the long call for, you know, more than I bought it for by the end of the trade, I'm good. By the way, as you can see here, this is a Discord by my friend Henry, who runs an awesome community where he shares his trades and coaches people on options income strategies, just like the poor man's covered call. He's helped over 2,000 traders become profitable at options trading. He's really good. You can learn more about it by clicking the first link in the description. And if you want to see more dividends and options income content just like this, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks. All right, talk to you in the next one.